Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Soaring Saucer, a thrilling counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings. Recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi-Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks, Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best and twice as much in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now to Counter Spy. Separating Mexico from the United States is the Rio Grande River. On the Mexican bank of the river, one dark night early this month, stood a train of pack burros, waiting stolidly as two men astride horses peered into the darkness across the rushing water. Clear, Pedro. No border patrol, no counter spies. Good, Senor Bart. Have all the borough drivers got guns, Pedro? Yes, but I think they don't shoot so good. Well, if there's any trouble, they better try. Come on, let's go. See, si. Hombres, vamos en el rio. Pronto, pronto. Yeah. Pedro, what's the matter? Uh, it's all right, Senor Bart. Burrow just stumble a bit. Uh, All right, stay where you are. What? United States counter spies and border patrol. Look, senor. Men, they climb out of the ground like prairie dogs. They dug foxholes and covered them. Come on, Pedro, back to the Mexican side. No, it's no use, senor. See, the Mexican Rorales were penned in. Stay where you are. Drop your weapons in the river and ride out with your hands in the air. Oh, senor. No good, Pedro. From here on out, it's every man for himself. The rest of you better start shooting with me. Come on, men. Don't let a single one escape. This is Harding, Peters. Report. The raid was successful in general, Chief. We took close to $2 million worth of narcotics that was being carried in the packs of the boroughs. But the leader escaped. Any clue to his identity? No, Dave. The men we did capture were only minor members of the ring. They're being questioned now. All right, Peters. You stay on the job there. I'll be down as soon as the counter-spy budget for next year has been approved. When will that be, Chief? About two days. But don't hold off on any action for me. We want that ringleader. And we want him fast. Bart. Hello, Mr. Valdez. Where have you been? Filthy. You look like a tramp. What do you expect, Claude? I've been on the run for a day and a night. I'm lucky I escaped at all. I assume naturally that no one followed you here. Uh, you can rest easy. 
I did six miles across open sagebrush country before I headed here for your hacienda. There was no one on my trail. Well, I... I take it you already know. The radio and papers were full of it. Two million dollars of our merchandise taken, two men dead, three captured. Hey, what gives with you, Claude? You're not very upset for a man who's lost two million dollars? <laughs> One must expect losses in our business. Besides, I half expected something like this to happen sooner or later. When we use such a primitive mode of transportation as burrows. Maybe, but they've gotten a lot of snow across for us. True, my friend, true. But I have devised, perfected, and am now ready to use a much more modern, I might even say futuristic, mode of transportation. Oh? What is this new method? Where is it? In Tia Puma's ranch in the Sonora country. Tia Puma? Are we dealing with that old vulturess again? Yes. I'll have horses ready in the morning, and we'll call on Tia Puma tomorrow. Chief. The car's over here. Peter's how's it going? Turn up anything? Very little. Have to develop it in an undercover job. Go on. All we got out of questioning the three smugglers we took was one name. Tia Puma. Tia Puma. She sounds pretty savage. Captain Alvarez of the Mexican Morales says she's mixed up in every type of crime known to man. And a few that she invented herself. Must be some girl. If you consider a woman of 72 a girl... Seventy-two? Mm-hmm. With a delightful habit of keeping two pumas, mountain lions, as house pets. Nothing more than pets? Well, according to the captain, enemies of Tia Puma have a disconcerting habit of turning up dead on lonely mountain roads. Clawed to death by mountain lions. A unique method of murder. It should certainly leave very little evidence. That's the captain's chronic complaint. Of course, it's unnatural. Pumas never attack a man unless cornered or penned up with him. I hope I won't find out, Chief. Well, if you're going undercover to meet the lady, you may, so we'd better be prepared. Any suggestions will be gratefully accepted. Well, I have a few, but they'll keep till we get the feel of us. Oh, I take it she's located in Mexico, huh? In the state of Sonora. In that case, we'd better set up a method of radio communication for you before you call on Tia Puma and her two lovely pets. <laughs> See, your pretties are as charming as ever, Tia Puma. Yes, Senor Valdez. I keep them happy. They keep me happy. Happy? <laughs> what is the matter, Senor Corning? They make you nervous. They don't make me comfortable. <laughs> Rest assured, Senor Bart. They will not do nothing unless Tia Puma tells them to. Well, I hope you're right. Well, now, Claude, where's this? futuristic mode of transportation for smuggling you were talking about. In the stables of Tia Puma. Everything is prepared, Tia? Si, everything. Bueno, shall we go? Si, come on, Bart. In the stables? What the devil is it, a flying horse? <laughs> Close, Bart. Only my method is a little more advanced. It's a flying saucer. <laughs> There they are, Bart. What do you think of them? Well, they're screwy looking things. How do they work? I shall explain it. Tia, do you have a shipment ready to go? Si, sí, Senor Valdez. Five pounds in that container over there. But it is the last we got. Ah, yes? A job for you, Bart. We'll need more. I'll get plenty. Good. Tia, go to the control room and push the button that slides back the stable roof. Si, sí, Senor. Okay, Claude, start talking. As you see, Bart, there are 20 of these discs or saucers here. Mm-hmm. They are all 10 feet in diameter and 3 feet thick. 
Now, don't tell me you can fill the whole thing with snow. No. They each carry about five pounds of narcotics. Just what we've got here. The rest of the space is taken up with a radio operating mechanism. How do they fly? It's the same principle as a helicopter. You see those fins on the top and the bottom of each saucer? Yeah, I see. They give it the lift and drive to sustain the saucer in the air. We launch them by rocket power, which sends them flying into the air spinning. Uh -huh. Then the radio mechanism controlled from this board here takes over. Look, are you sure all this will work? <laughs> it has on the models I've made. Mm, models. Today we test the first one in actual use. And tell me this, where are you going to land it? I have two receiving stations set up in Texas. Hey, what's that? The roof. Look. <laughs> it parts in the middle. Well, that's quite a gimmick. Bart, see this little door on the top of the disc? Yeah. It opens. So... A cargo compartment. Uh, hand me that package of goods. Yeah. There you are. It fits in neatly. Ah, so, close the door. And we're ready to make delivery. And you launch it from this uh, platform it's on. Yes. Yeah. See underneath? A rocket attached. And how do you set that up? From the control board by an electrical charge. Come on. Yeah. Ready, Bart? Yeah. This thing makes quite a noise. That's why we're using Tia's ranch. No near neighbors. I was wondering. All right. Go ahead, Claude. Set her off. All right. To a new era in smuggling. Ah. Brother, it's practically out of sight already. Yes. Now we'll set the radio control, the rocket attachment will drop off, and our flying saucer is on its way. This is your local newscaster with some more on the latest outbreak of flying saucer stories. Millie Seabor over El Paso Way reports she saw one while hanging out the family wash. Big and black, says she. Another report on the saucers comes from Bill Lansing, a crop dusting pilot. Small and shiny, says he. Well, variety is the spice of life, says we. Seriously, though, the Army Air Force has asked us to broadcast a request that all persons seeing or thinking they see the objects described as flying saucers get in touch with them at the San Antonio Air Base. The Air Force has been conducting an investigation for the past two years, either to set these stories at rest or confirm their validity. They'd welcome your cooperation. Now a brief summary of the activity. Peters to David Harding in San Antonio. Peters to David Harding in San Antonio. Go ahead, Peters. Chief, I think I've made contact with the narcotics ring. Through Tia Puma? Not directly, but I met a man named Bart Corning in this Mexican village, and he's taking me out to her ranch tomorrow. What angle did you use? I said my name was Pete Crane, and I was peddling snow. Apparently, the ring is in short supply, so this guy Corning was glad to latch on to me. Nice going, Peters. You have any idea of the exact location of the ranch? It's somewhere up in the Sierra Mountains, Dave, near the headwaters of the Calixo River. It's supposed to be the only place for miles around. Well, can you get a map of that region and indicate the general area? Sure, Chief. Radio it up here. I'll have an aerial reconnaissance made of the terrain. Okay. And let's set up a target time for you to report back. Say, 4 p.m. tomorrow. All right, Dave. 4 p.m. it is. And watch yourself. You're walking into the lion's mouth, Peters. Don't let it close on you. In a moment, back to Counter Spy, presented by delicious Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola gets a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Yes, twice as much and better, too. 
You know Pepsi gives you twice as much. You know Pepsi's better, tastes better. But I want to make sure you know which cola drink is a proven highest quality. Listen. Impartial tests were made comparing all the leading nationally known colas. And here's the news. Delicious Pepsi was rated tops for quick food energy and honest-to-goodness value, ounce for ounce. Yes, more value and quick food energy in every tasty sip of Pepsi. That's why Pepsi is so refreshing. Why you feel so good, why you're on the beat, why people call Pepsi their favorite treat, when the qualities prove tops and the taste is so delightful, so refreshing that you bubble and the quantity is double. Say, is it any wonder Pepsi's America's big, big favorite? Insist on tasty Pepsi wherever you may be. At the fountain, say, Pepsi, please. At the stand, say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big bottles. How about getting a carton tonight of delicious Pepsi-Cola? Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Now back to Counter Spy. Here's the place, Pete. Tia Puma's Ranch. Lonely enough, Bart. Come on. Good to stretch your legs after that ride. Uh, sure does. What the... Tia, call him off. Oh, Senor Bob. You know my pets won't hurt you. I don't like those things running around loose. Make that double in spades for me. <laughs> and this, I take it, is the Senor Pete Crane you say you bring out. That's right, Tia. He wants to do business with us. But do we have to do it with those pussy cats looking over our shoulders? I'm afraid so, Senor Crane. They are my pets and my protection. An old woman like me is at the mercy of anyone with strength. Not with those brutes around. Come on, let's go out in the house. With pleasure. House cats, are they? Yes, Senor Crane. All right, come on, Tia. Let's get down to business. Bueno, this way, Senor. The living room. Hello, Bart. Hi, Claude. This is the guy who has goods for sale. Pete Crane... Claude Valdez. Hello. How do you do, sir? A cold drink, perhaps? The ride up here is long and dusty. Thanks. I'll have some, too, Claude. Just how much goods do you have, Mr. Crane? Eight pounds. Cut or uncut? Uh, your drink, Mr. Crane. Uncut. Thanks. A tidy fortune. <sighs> Ah, refreshing. Yeah. Now, Mr. Crane, what price are you asking for this, hmm? Well, what about telling me what... what you charge to, uh... to get the... Uh, to get the stuff across? Oh, my head. I feel dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> I commend you, Tia. A very potent drug. Thank you, senor. <laughs> hey, Claude, why the knockout drops? They're harmless. And just sleep for 12 or 14 hours. Well, you think he's a phony? I haven't the slightest idea, Bart. But I don't believe in taking chances. Search him. Sure. His wallet. That yeah, says Pete Crane, all right. Pocket comb, handkerchief. Tube of some kind of hand cream. Huh? Fastidious. Let him keep it. Is that all? Yeah. And now what if he's going to be out for half the day? It will give me time to get back to my hacienda and check him in my law abiding rogues gallery. That thing again. What do you say, that thing? I think it's rather clever of me. Since the law maintains pictures of all known criminals, why shouldn't that criminal maintain pictures of all known law officials? Harding speaking. Oh, Mr. Harding, I'm very glad you're in San Antonio. Who is this? 
Colonel Enshaw of the Army Air Force. Oh, yes, Colonel. What can I do for you? You're down here on a narcotic smuggling case? That's right, Colonel. How do you know? Well, I called your Washington office and they told me. Oh? You see, the Air Force has been investigating the latest outbreak of flying saucer stories. I think our paths cross. Hey, go on, Colonel. Well, if you come out here to the field, Mr. Harding, I can show you better than tell you. Well, I'm expecting a message, but I'll have it transferred out to the field. All right, Colonel, I'll be out in 15 minutes. Ah, here we are, Mr. Harding. This is the hangar. Ah, look over there. The object on the floor. What is it? A flying saucer. What? One of our pilots was out on a target practice flight. He saw it and reported it to the field right away. I ordered him to shoot it down if he could. He could. It's a queer-looking contraption. All those fins sticking out on it. Well, that's what sustained it in flight. But, uh, just look at this. A little compartment. And this package of white powder was in it. Let me see that. Here you are. Narcotics. That's what our medical officer said. And we've examined the workings of this disc. It's radio control. This is incredible. Using a flying saucer to smuggle narcotics into the country. Well, whoever designed this device knew his aeronautics. And psychology. Using the most publicized thing in the country to cover up the smuggling. Well, that's your department, Mr. Harding. I just thought maybe... Well, maybe the message you're expecting, Mr. Harding. Oh. They knew we were in this hangar. Thank you, Colonel. I'll take it. Hello? Yes, this is Harding. Oh, no word yet, huh? It's almost 5 p.m. No, we won't wait any longer. Contact the Mexican Rurales, Captain Alvarez. That's right. Ask him to move as quickly as possible. Right, and tell him I'm flying down immediately. A little more water, Bart, and not so gentle. Are you sure you're right, Claude? This gentleman's face was as big as life in my private rogues gallery of police. Harry Peters counter spy. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think he's coming around. The drug should uh, be wearing well, off. Well. Oh. Hello. What? Baldus. Bart. What? What? You've been enjoying a somewhat induced sleep, Mr. Peters. Sleep? But how... Yes, yeah, you heard right. I called you Mr. Peters. I was afraid you did. Thank you for not insulting my intelligence by denying your identity. Don't mention it. Is that gun going to induce some more sleep? Nothing as crude as that, Mr. Peters. But... Tell Tia to bring down one of her pets to the guest room. Okay, Claude. I gather I'm going to have an accident. (laughs) Something like that, Mr. Peters. Now, if you'll just start walking, I'll show you to your room at the end of this corridor. It's comfortable, I hope. Quiet, yes. But it will have some drawbacks shortly. I imagine so. You know, I regret this very much. I'm sure you do. Not your death, of course, but the fact that you're finding us makes it necessary for us to move. I'm sorry to have been such a bother. Oh, don't apologize. We all have our duties. All right, Mr. Peters. You can stop and lift the latch on that door, please. Your quarters, Mr. Peters. Rather sparsely furnished and badly lighted. Only one window. With bars. <laughs> True. But your roommate, who will arrive shortly, doesn't care very much about furniture and uh, sees very well in the dark. Inside, Mr. Peters. Heavy walls. Thick door. Soundproofed. I so dislike death screams. Inside, please. Pleasant dreams, Mr. Peters. Senor 
Baldy. He's in there. Yes, the arm. It will be such sport for my pet, my angel. <laughs> Let's get it over with. We we have to get out of here. Of course, Bart. Call some of our men in the village. Have them bring us a truck to carry the saucers and radio equipment away from here. I'll help you pack anything that might identify us, and we'll leave as soon as the trucks arrive. Okay, Claude. Ah, you ready, Thea? Yes. Yes. <laughs> bueno, my angel, there is a prize for you in there. <laughs> You've earned it, my pet. <laughs> All right, Senor Valdez, open the door. Go, my angel. <laughs> We can leave Mr. Peters in peace. Lord, I burned all the papers in the cellar incinerator. Didn't I hear the trucks drive up? Yes. I've been busy packing this equipment with Tia's help. All right, you go out and show them what to do. <laughs> What's the matter with that devil? Is he jealous of his buddy? All the excitement makes him nervous. Never mind him, Bart. Go out to the trucks. We want to get out of here as soon as possible. Okay, I'm All right, all of you. What is... Stand where you are. Cops. Captain Alvarez. Yes, Mr. Hardy. What do you want? Uh, Look out, Mr. Hardy. Oh, oh, my pet. My pet. You're not getting me. Alvarez, he's got a gun. Oh. You will not escape, Mr. Hardy. Look. Your lady has fainted over the body of that mountain lion. And this one here is taking it all rather calmly. And why not, Mr. Harding? I'm a fatalist. You know me, then perhaps you know Harry Peters. Uh, I've met him. Where is he? <laughs> I'm afraid, Mr. Harding, that for once the Marines arrived too late. You'll find Mr. Peters in the room at the end of the corridor. Captain Alvarez, keep this man covered. It would be a pleasure, Mr. Harding. Peter, Chief. Chief. Well, that's one way of getting rid of a roommate. Well, it's obvious the green door of Havana's works. Oh, am I glad you had that idea, Dave. Can't you smell the place? It's like a licorice factory. How'd you use it? Well, they locked me in the room first, so I immediately took out the tube of creamed oil of anise and spread it all over the floor and on the walls. Yeah. When they let the puma in, he bounced in, got the smell of the anise, and stopped. In a few minutes, he was purring like a kitten. I stood in the corner and left him strictly alone. That's how I can imagine. Well, I guess it was the sudden sight of you and that gun that turned him into an attacker again. Well, it's a good thing we set a target time for you to report back. I might not have gotten here. But you did, Dave. And that's what counts. Well, now let's get out of here and mop up the remains of this flying saucer smuggling ring. Ah, delicious Pepsi-Cola. Bring it on now. Enjoy that bubbling, tangy, tasty treat. Sure hits the spot. At parties, it's a wonderful idea to serve delicious Pepsi. That extra quick food energy gives folks that bounce, that zing. And Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottles go twice as far. You get a carton of six bottles, and you serve 12 full-size drinks. So save that money. Get the best, and get twice as much in delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's the price. That's it, delicious Pepsi Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting case of the crystalline double cross. When the world's most valuable diamond and a beautiful woman both disappeared. A huge reward was offered for the thief, alive or dead. We feared the effect of that reward on the underworld, and until the last moment hardly suspected the one person who really tried to collect it. Listen on Thursday to... The Case of the Crystalline Double Cross on Counter Spy.
Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York and was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Palmer Thompson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight. <laughs>